The Sega Genesis, when it came out in 1989, had one of the best console lineups in history. If you purchased one when it came out, you had a plethora of games to tide you over until the next year. And when that next year rolled around, man, there were so many more great games truly proving that Genesis does what Nintendo don't. How are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. If you grabbed a stake of Genesis, you're just some of the games you were playing on the Genesis in 1990. There are so many games to talk about. Some of them I talk about for a minute. Some of them I talk about for like 10 to 15 seconds. You cannot skip ahead because you never know what game's gonna come up next. And you need to let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. The first game for the Sega Genesis that was released in 1990 was a cute game called Zoom. And though Though it wasn't super marketable, I thought it was a lot of fun. Well, it's just kind of your cutesy puzzle game. It's called Zoom because you're always zooming. You're always moving. And when you move, you leave these traces of lines behind you. And when you square in these uh, little individual squares, they start to flash. Now, the goal, you can figure it out if you haven't played this game already, is you have to do that for every square on the board. Yeah, there's gonna be these guys in the way of you too. You run into them, you die. So there's little things you can do, like, you know, they can like drop pellets behind you or something like that which I know sounds weird to kind of push them out of the way. But don't worry, you can also jump over them, Pac-Mania style, so that'll help you out a lot too. It's a Sega Genesis game that not a lot of people ever talk about. I had a lot of fun with it, and you know, if this is up your alley, just kind of a fun, cute, simple puzzle game. That might be worth checking out today. When it comes to old school Sega Genesis fans, you've probably heard people talk about Herzog's Vi or Herzog Zooey if you were middle school John Riggs. This is not a game you can just pick up and play. If you find it loose somewhere, no manual, no instructions, this game's kind of confusing up front. But once you figure it out, it's a lot of fun. I don't know what you would classify this as, and maybe help me out in the comments. Is this, it's a, it's like real time strategy for the time, but still gives you the control of action in your hands? Well, it's you versus them, red versus blue, you play as red on this one. You can do two players simultaneous, too. And you have to capture the bases by, you know, you have your little infantry, you can uh, you know, use your goal to, you know, you can get missiles, you can get tanks and stuff like that to defend your bases. But then you have to get your guys to the neutral bases to overtake them. As your airplane, you can also transform into, like, a shooting robot thing, and, um, of course, when you're transporting your guys, you can turn into, like, a uh, like a carrier in a way. Just in that little bit, I probably already made this game more difficult than it sounds. It's really not. <laughs> and it really is a lot of fun. I grew up with Transformers and GoBots and stuff like that, so I loved the fact that your plane could transform into a robot, so you could, you know, fight the, you know, fight the other robots and stuff on the ground. And of course, transform back into an airplane and, you know, fight your uh, airplane guy, too. RPGs were just starting to take off and just get noticed, and Fantasy Star 2 was one of the games that, you know, a lot of people maybe grew up with Final Fantasy, a lot of people grew up with Dragon Warrior back then, um, and a lot of people grew up with Fantasy Star. I don't want to call it your basic turn-based RPG, because it's not. However, it is a turn-based RPG, <laughs> so you keep that in mind when you check out Fantasy Star 2, but this game is iconic, it's a classic. Fantasy Star 2 is on a count-on-one-hand list of turn-based RPGs that kind of, kind of catapulted what RPGs are today. It all started with this game and a couple of others. To many, it all started with this game. From the pretty complex to the basically simple, we have Shove It! I just love the name Shove It. Well, it's your box-pushing game, push the boxes into the spots. And as simple as this looks, and as simple as it is in its design, you can do this game, and many games have been available like this for a lot of consoles. I remember this game getting a lot of press back then. Maybe it was just in magazines more often, like in, in the form of advertisements, but I remember seeing this a lot. And, hey, it's easy enough, simple enough, just push the blocks into the spots. Well, it starts out easy enough, then after a while you're like, how do I do? What's going on? <laughs> I still had fun with Shove It, and if nothing else, the name alone is amazing. We had Air Diver that admittedly looked cooler than it played. Yeah, I'm not talking about the best games for the Sega Genesis in 1990. It's just, here are some of the games that I was nostalgic for. I remember playing them, I remember picking them up, I remember renting them, and I remember thinking, Air Diver, hey, that looks kinda cool. Looks like a fun little flight game, you know, kinda like an Afterburner style game. Well, it is. It's basically Great Harvest Afterburner. And it's not even that, it's Good Harvest Afterburner. I mean, it's not terrible, it's just, we already have Afterburner. Well, unfortunately, Afterburner 2, also came out right around the same time for the Sega Genesis, so you're good to go. Now this game is amazing. I was a huge fan of Afterburner, both 1 and 2. You're constantly moving, shooting the other guys out of the skies, you got your rockets as well. It's Afterburner. It's an arcade classic and Afterburner 2 for the Sega Genesis. It was, um, it was a must-own back then, I think. 
Anyone else grab Super Hydlide because you thought it was gonna be like a super, super awesome Legend of Zelda style game? Oh boy, were we wrong. Well, I mean, it has its charm, I'll give it that. But man, this game is pretty rough. It plays a lot like the NES one. And if you've never played the NES one, good. You have your overworld and you have to, you know, attack your enemies just by standing right next to them and hitting your attack button. Hopefully they won't attack you in, the, in return. But of course they do. They're enemies. It's what they do. I did like the fact you could speed it up so you, you could just, like, you know, die quicker and get this game over with, I guess. I don't know. If you liked Super High Light, let me know in the comments. Maybe you're nostalgic for it. I am nostalgic for not liking it. Target Earth was another game that a lot of people were talking about as a, oh, you have a Sega Genesis? You gotta check out Target Earth. And admittedly, and this is just me, probably not you, this is just me. I remember finally getting around to looking at it after a, a year or so. People say, oh man, Target Earth, you gotta check it out. And I remember being like, okay, I, you know, all right, it's, it's okay, you know. <laughs> but I get it. I mean, it's kind of interesting. You can go through and you can get different weapons. You can, uh, you know, shoot the other enemies down and stuff like that. It's not a terrible game. It isn't. And a lot of people love this game. Um, I just need to find that charm of why you like this game. And maybe because you're nostalgic for it, and I'm not. I didn't. I ended up not playing this game until years later. I mean, the game looks pretty cool, especially for its time. It plays this robot that you can kind of, you know, just move around and <laughs> shoot the other robots and aliens and stuff. I mean, I'm guessing those are aliens inside these robot things. I don't know. I'm sure you love this game, but, you know, I don't know. DJ Boy was an interesting brawler, like a beat-em-up for its time. You're constantly on roller skates, so you're constantly moving, and then you also have to fight these enemies uh, that are coming at you as well. You got your, you know, your A, B, and C buttons, your punch, kick, and jump. It was just an interesting way of doing it. That, you know, like, a, I loved Double Dragon for its time. So it's like, oh, but this game, you're constantly moving. You're always moving trying to get to where you need to go next. It was also the first game I remember reading about that there was a controversy behind this game coming out in the US where the Japanese version was not very appropriate for one of the bosses that wouldn't fly in America. So they changed it so it wouldn't be as bad, but then when you still see the boss, you can kind of understand why they changed it. Now this is the boss in the US version. It's a recoloring of a boss in the Japanese version. Won't go into it from there. I'm glad they did that for the US version. I'm glad it didn't fly back then. It definitely wouldn't fly by today's standards. Ghostbusters was definitely one of the games to grab for the Sega Genesis back in 1990. I remember playing this game for the first time at my friend Aaron's house, and I remember thinking to myself, wow, this game, you could just tell this game was made in Japan. And I can't tell you why. It just it was like a Sega Genesis version. Everything is like chibi, you know, like <laughs> like the bigger heads and the you know stockier bodies and all that. But what a fun game, and what a fantastic game, and what a great game. I like many huge fan of the Ghostbusters and the fact that they made a Sega Genesis version, because especially after sludging or trying to play the NES version. Oh my god. The NES version was confusing. It just wasn't a very good game, to be honest with you. I know the game gets better, like once you figure out how to play it, of course it does, but you have to figure out how to play it. <laughs> this game gives me the things I like in video games. This gives me a platformer, run-and-gun style. You can get your upgrades and stuff like that. The bosses are pretty cool. I mean, the enemies are great, kind of creative, kind of creepy a little bit. Big fan of Ghostbusters for the Sega Genesis. Absolutely love this game. Definitely one of the best games that the Genesis had back in 1990. <laughs> along with Moonwalker. Talk about back-to-back -back hits, good lord. Now, I honestly don't know why I liked this game so much. Now, if you reskinned this game so it didn't feature Michael Jackson, didn't have Michael Jackson's music in it and everything, just reskinned it as something else, you know, that's like, like somebody with a magic wand or something, I mean, it would still be okay. The fact that it starred Michael Jackson and it had Genesis version Michael Jackson songs in it, that was amazing for its time, especially for its time. I mean, the gameplay is simple enough, find the Annies, of which there are several in each stage, Sometimes behind the door, sometimes behind the, uh, you know, the, the window or stuff like that. And then other stages, like, sometimes in a trunk of the car. I thought it was interesting that your dance moves is what would defeat the enemies. What, I mean, what else are you going to do with Michael Jackson, right? He's a lover, not a fighter. You can spin around, toss your hat, use that as a weapon. The highlight, of course, naturally, is when you use your magic meter and you get all the enemies to dance on screen all at once. That was always the best part. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker for the Genesis. I, I think it's still fun today. I, it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't done so yet. And if you had a Sega Genesis back in 1990, you're definitely playing this game. Michael! <laughs> Columns came out in 1990. Well, Tetris it isn't, but it was their own take on a puzzle game. And hey, you know what? This game is two players simultaneous. The NES version of Tetris wasn't. 
well, the Tingen was, but still, that's beside the point. It's called columns because these pieces are always in columns. You cannot lay them flat, uh, however, you can kind of cycle through them to get you where you're, you want to place your gems. It's a match three, three in a row, across, down, a diagonal, that'll clear out the pieces. It's still not a bad game, and it would tide us over until the Puyo games came out. Uh, however, it's just, I mean, for its time, it was worth checking out. Again, it wasn't Tetris, but, you know, kind of by that time, I was already a little bored of Tetris. I know it's hard to say because there's like Tetris tournaments today <laughs> and I still love Tetris today, but I was looking for a something new and this was that a something new. Got Shadow Blasters from Sage's Creations and look out for Sage's Creations games for the Sega Genesis. They may not be as popular as a Konami or a Capcom, but the Sage's Creations games for the Sega Genesis were all pretty good. Unique, something new. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about more of those games later. Shadow Blasters lets you choose uh, one of four different characters, each with their own ability. And it's your basic, uh, you know, Shinobi-ish style, cause just kind of like run and attack the enemies kind of game. If you lose one of your players, don't worry about it. You will uh, start again as one of the others. So instead of having lives, you only have one life, but you have four characters. So you have those four lives. Imagine if they would have reskinned this as a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game for the Sega Genesis, this game would have sold a bazillion copies. But they didn't, and it's still, I think it sold pretty well, I'm sure it did for its time. And it's still a fun game to go back to today, where like, you've already played the Sonic games, you've already played the Shinobi games, you're looking for something new, but still has that nostalgic vibe. I'm telling you, these Sage's Creations games, including Shadow Blasters, um, I think they're great. I like charging up your weaponry to see like what kind of special power each of the characters had. Yeah, fun game, I like this one. Well, you have to check out Atomic Robo Kid, if nothing more than just it looked cute, because you played as a little cute robot. This game may as well just be a horizontal shooter, however, you move at your own pace. You can glide around a little bit, you can shoot the other enemies too. One hit kill on this one, fortunately, start out with a bunch of lives. You get weapon upgrades as you move on too. This was another one of those games that they really talked about a lot in video game magazines for its time, so I had to check it out. It was one I rented, I don't think I ever owned this one, but I had fun with it. <laughs> Eswat was pretty popular for its time too. I did not know it was based on an arcade game back then, but I sure did play the Sega Genesis version. And again, capitalizing on that Shinobi style. Plays a lot like Shinobi. You play as a cop, shooting the other enemies in the kneecaps. You move through these pretty large stages. <laughs> I mean, the first boss you encounter is a helicopter, so that tells you something. And then some of the stages have pretty unique designs to them too, like this one like you're right on the elevators. I didn't play it as much in this gameplay footage, but the fun of it is when you get to like the final stage of each levels, I guess, uh, then you get your e-swatch suit. And that's when you're like, you're super buff and you're, you're like, kind of like, you know, an armored, like an armored suit shell, the thing that you wear and stuff like that. Ah, super fun. I remember having a lot of fun with the e-swat. Oh, the creepiness. The creepiness, but still a pretty cool on a, on a TV screen. In Sector X, again from Sage's Creation, I'm telling you. It is your horizontal shooter, however you play as a bug. And you're killing the other bugs. Really don't need to say a whole lot more past that, but the people who have played this game, the people who like this game, they really, really like this game. I'm included in that too. Fun music on this one too. There were definitely no lack of shooters. There's several of them I didn't even cover in this video. Uh, Thunder Force 3 is included on the list, because it has to be on the list, because it's a Thunder Force game. I like the fact that instead of picking up your speed boosters, you choose how fast you want to go. If you want to slow down, you want to speed up, it's just the push of a button. And then the weapons you pick up will just give you that option to have those weapons too, until you get hit, and then you lose that weapon. Fast paced, pretty difficult on this one, at least it is for me. Love the music in this game. Thunder Force 3 came out for the Sega Genesis in 1990. And yeah, while we're talking about shooters, let's talk about Whip Rush just for a second. Again, several shooters that I didn't even cover in this video. Just because there's so many of them. That might be its own video later on. But Whip Rush was cool just because it just looked cool. I don't know. <laughs> I can't even describe it. It's just another horizontal shooter. There are so many of them. And this one stood out to me. And I don't know, maybe it didn't for you, I don't know. But I, I remember I remember seeing a lot about Whip Rush and it's like, oh, you gotta check it out. I remember it was kind of hard to find too. It may not be hard to find now, but you know, at least it was for me back then. All right, here's the arcade port I've been waiting a long time for. This is Strider. If all you know about Strider is the NES version, that is completely different from the arcade version, which was ported to the Sega Genesis as well as other consoles. Well, you play as Strider here, you, and you have your giant sword, your Cypher. And for some reason, I remember the Cypher being more popular than the character itself or the storyline itself or anything else. It's all about that giant sword. Well, this is no different than Berserk or even a Final Fantasy VII, I suppose, when you think about it. But you don't even see the sword move so fast. You just see the little, the little swing that it makes. 
and you do these little acrobatic, you know, like cartwheels and stuff in the air. The stages were pretty fun. The stages were unique. It's a little clunky in control, but the arcade version was too, so don't worry about that. It was just fun to play through this and see what the next level was going to be, because you never knew. Everything from on the ground to like the snow area to the jungle. You know, you're on, you're on like an air, air base and stuff like that later too. Love Strider in the arcade and it played so well on the Sega Genesis. So happy that they did this version. I don't know if you've considered Uncommon, but a lot of people don't really talk about Burning Force. Well, it had that anime style that I didn't know I was going to be so fascinated with until years later. And Burning Force itself, well, it's a behind-the-back uh, shooter, like you're on this little hovercraft thingy. I'm not exactly sure what this is. It looks like it's got a hover... Hover jet, like hover jet ski thing. No, oh, kind of like Space Harrier. I was more infatuated with how it looked than how it played. And yeah, it played okay. It played fine. I just thought it looked really cool though. I had to check out Burning Force. Dynamite Duke is another game that came out in 1990 for the Sega Genesis. I don't think of like an Operation Wolf, but instead of just being like a target on screen, you can see yourself too. And you have a giant hole in the middle of you so you can see what's through you as well. I thought that was an interesting way of doing it. I mean, it could have just been a wireframe, like Punch-Out style, but that'll work too, I guess. Yeah, shoot the other enemies and stuff like that, grab your upgrades, grab your items, shoot the tanks, and then you see yourself because one of your buttons is to use your gun, naturally, but then you can also punch and kick enemies when they get close to you, too. And I thought that was a pretty interesting way of doing things, so Dynamite Duke, very cool. <laughs> Granada was a pretty fun game as well. I've talked about this on my channel once before. It's a little bit like Gauntlet if you were a tank. You have this giant overworld map and you have like these enemy depots that you have to destroy along with the enemies that come out of them, of course. You do have your map on the side there. That'll let you know where the enemy depots are. Sometimes it's not just as easy as going in that direction. Sometimes you gotta find like some narrow hallway or something like that to go around buildings get to uh, where you need to go to defeat these uh, enemy bases here. You pick up fun little items along the way too that'll help you shoot the other enemies down. Very, very cool. Very fun. And then once all the enemy depots are defeated, then the giant boss comes out and you gotta deal with that now. And it's called Granada. Came out late 1990 for the Sega Genesis. Fun game. I still like this game today. And if you've had a Sega Genesis up to this point, the game you got for Christmas was probably Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Well, it is just a platformer, but this is a Sega Genesis style platformer. You got the Disney vibe and everything. You play as Mickey Mouse. You can either throw apples at your enemies or just bop them from above. It's not like Super Mario Brothers where you just have to jump and then land on them. If you just do that, you'll actually take damage. You actually have to hit the jump button again to kind of uh, butt bounce them in a way. This is the game that a lot of people have nostalgic memories for. Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion. Don't need to talk about it too much from here. It's just a fun platformer. It's the platformer to have for the Sega Genesis because there honestly weren't a whole lot of these kind of cartoony platformers for the Sega Genesis in 1990. That is until the next year when Sonic the Hedgehog came out. Make sure you're subscribed. We'll talk about Genesis games from 1991 and other consoles for other years uh, in future videos. Mm -hmm.